The U.S. nuclear power establishment often points to France as an example to follow. France has not solved its radioactive waste problem. France does get 75% of its electricity from nuclear power. The only place that I know of that gets more is Chicago, Illinois, which gets about 80%, or at least used to. But France uh, reprocesses high-level radioactive waste. That's extraction of plutonium, supposedly to reuse as reactor fuel. It's largely fallen apart, this plutonium recycling scheme in France. They're sitting on a mountain of separated plutonium, which they have to guard 24-7 because it is weapons usable once you remove it from nuclear waste. In fact, the process used in France, the process that's been used in England, although they're going to phase out reprocessing, is the very same process used by the U.S. Manhattan Project to build the Nagasaki atomic bomb and the Trinity test explosion in New Mexico, the first atomic bomb in human history. This is weapons usable material. So in addition to the plutonium extracted, now they've got liquid high level radioactive waste, which they then need to re-solidify into glass logs. It's very uh, dangerous because it could leak into the environment. It could uh, explode if cooling is lost to the storage containers that hold it. In France, we have uh, military liquid high-level radioactive waste at Hanford, Washington, that if it loses cooling for long enough, it could explode in those tanks. And the same risk persists in France. The process of reprocessing itself is very messy. And France has taken advantage of a loophole in international law. If France were to dump radioactive waste off the side of a ship on the high seas, that would be against the law. What they've done instead is they've built an underwater pipeline into the English Channel where they discharge what they call low-level radioactive waste to the tune of uh, tens and hundreds of thousands and perhaps even millions of gallons. It depends on how long a time period you're talking about. Each and every year, they discharge this radioactivity into the ocean. And it's been detected, it's been fingerprinted as far away as the Canadian Arctic and it's contaminating seafood supplies all along the way. A dozen European governments are up in arms against this practice, uh, suing the French in international court to stop doing this. And then once you even have the glass logs that are ready for burial, France lacks a repository. They don't have a dump site. So France has not solved its radioactive waste problem. They've actually suffered a number of radioactive waste accidents and also reactor accidents in recent years. There was actually a worker killed uh, just last year at a radioactive waste processing facility. So France has a lot of problems. Uh, the head of its largest nuclear company called Arriva was canned recently and has come, at, come out swinging against the company. <laughs> so there's internal disputes within the nuclear establishment of France. An interesting tie-in with Finland, which is the subject matter of Into Eternity, uh, the proposed dump site in Finland is right next door to the nuclear power plant called Okilawoto, where there's already an operating number of reactors, but a new one under construction, which is a French-designed reactor. It's uh, EPR. Over there, it's the European Pressurized Reactor. Over here, they called it the Evolutionary Power Reactor was proposed in Maryland, was proposed all over the country, but has largely uh, failed here, uh, fortunately. In Finland, that construction project is over 100% over budget. So it's doubled in price from the original estimate, and it is four years behind schedule. And each and every year that that reactor uh, is not operating, and they're still far from, from connecting to the grid, especially heavy industry in Finland faces bankruptcy because they are forced now to buy electricity on the spot market uh, at a high price that they had counted on from this reactor. And there's a real lesson there for these new reactors in the U.S. The cost overruns, the delays in schedule are infamous in the U.S. nuclear power industry and the worldwide nuclear power industry. Forbes magazine back in the mid-80s called the first generation of U.S. nuclear power plants uh, the biggest managerial disaster in business history. And we're just uh, doing it all over again right now.